Father God, we worship you this morning. Go ahead and lift his name, church. Father God, we worship you. Hallelujah. We thank you that you brought us out of sin and death, Father God. I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. I thank you that you just come into this place and fill us this morning, Father God, with your presence. Hallelujah. You, you touch yeah. each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you that pastor is a vessel to speak into our lives. I thank Amen. you for that right now. I thank you that we are all vessels to speak into everybody's lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We might want to notify ourselves he's alive. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I want to turn around and greet somebody and tell them you're glad to see him this morning. And uh, we're still working on a, a summer of ABS, right? Okay. We're, we're, we're going to, um, we've actually got the community center uh, tentatively scheduled for the last Saturday of July, like the 28th. It's going to cost us about $300 to have the community center for the whole day. I mean, the, the, um, that room over there for the entire day, you know, it'll cost us. So we got to, um, you know, We'll just take an offering and get there. How about that? Um, and uh, we'll talk to Gina about getting in the night before and setting up if there's nothing going on. So anyway, <clears throat> it'll be a one-day VBS. Yep. And the last one we can get from Gospel Light because they went out of business. This year in the middle, so people who had their VBSs scheduled and paid for and everything, nothing. They went under. And uh, so... I mean, we've been there for years, decades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a sad day. Um, but you got to raise up somebody else. Have to. You know, hallelujah, praise God. Anyway, uh, but we're glad to have you this morning. And uh, praise God. Good things are heading our way. Amen. Glory to God. Some big changes are coming our way. Yeah. Hallelujah. And um, you'll be the first to know. Amen. Hallelujah. When they get here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 So just get ready. Be praying about uh, what God's got in store for us and where we're heading. And uh, glory to God. Goodbye and say hey to Marvin out there. He's our new summer uh, uh, open up guy. So we want to make sure he feels you know, the love. Hallelujah. For coming out and opening up on Sunday mornings for us. We sure appreciate him doing that. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, it's time at this time if you, uh, to give. If you need an offering envelope, uh, caps out there. Uh, ready to ready to uh, give you an envelope. If you give it with your square cash or you give it through PayPal, go ahead and do that. Those of you online, you should have received uh, online the information on how to give or will eventually uh, when, when the um, person who does that wakes up. <laughs> We've been experiencing distortion this morning, I've been told, by on our um, feed. Uh, it's back now. There's, you know, uh, when it, sometimes the, the uh, network at the community center just does some weird things and when it and when it throttles down there's nothing we can do about it because uh, it, so it requires so much to get out to keep this streaming at a steady pace but once we have no control over that so another reason we believe in God for our own permanent location again so that we can yes. um, you know get our own network and have it at the speed we want it Amen. all the time Amen. Amen. Um, if we have to get 30 gig, we'll do it, and uh, we'll, we'll, we won't throttle it. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So anyway, praise the Lord. All right. Anybody else in the envelope didn't get one? All right. You ready to pray? Father, we thank you for the time and the offering that's been brought into the storehouse of God. We thank you that Jesus is the Lord of the time, and we thank you that he receiveth the time in heaven, and that when the money comes in, that it's used to expand, to advance the kingdom of God throughout all the earth. We thank you the people are blessed you cause them to give them the power to get wealth they may establish your covenant in the earth we thank you in the name of jesus that they have all their need met according to your riches in glory by christ jesus in jesus name everybody agree with that by saying amen, amen. amen. all right go ahead i'm sure we got another shirt this morning hallelujah <laughs> glory to god huh it's out there now all right well glory i was just looking at my face it's a little red <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe that's because I got some Indian in me I didn't know about. My wife says no. We're a little All righty. We are glad, we are happy that it's Father's Day. Amen. And uh, we're glad for all the dads this morning. Uh, also, it is uh, graduation weekend um, here in, in Guilford County Schools, at least. Uh, we've, they've had you know, graduation after graduation after graduation this week um, on weird days. Uh, ours was on. Um, my schools was on, on a Wednesday. Mo a Wednesday afternoon, we had some on Thursday morning. There were some on Saturday morning. There were some at the night. They went all over the place uh, trying to go through the Coliseum and uh, have graduation. But uh, good to see the kids graduated. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And also because we got kids graduating from our county schools and from our private schools, or our, our home schools, uh, we wanted to acknowledge a graduate this year. I have to count the thing done. Amen? Right. 
Hebrews 11.1, 1. now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, we get so caught up with having to touch it. Amen. We want natural proof that something exists. Amen. But faith is completely opposite of that. Faith, it makes a reference to things that don't exist as though they did. Faith summons things to come. And if God calleth those things which be not as though they were. He called them. He speaks them. Summons them. We've talked about this before. Use this. You know, you got Fido. Fido is a, is, is a roaming dog. You know, one of those dogs that'll come home when it's time to eat or you call him. <laughs> All right? And you, go out, you can see people go out in their backyard, and, you know, and, you know, especially when you live out the country or whatever. And they'll be standing in the backyard, you know, whatever the dog, your dog's name is. Uh, Nathan's dog is Blue. Uh, Shannon's is Dixie. You know, uh, Dixie doesn't, but, but Blue would roam off in the woods. He would, you know, if, he, if we had him on some big land, he'd be out there in the woods hunting raccoon. He's a blue tick coon hound. But you know, you go out in the back and go out there, and especially out in the country, you'll see people out there going, Blue, come here, boy. Come on. And the dog will be anywhere near him. You don't see a dog anywhere. And they're just standing there holler, Come on, boy. Come on. Well, they're summoning. Amen. They can't see him. It's whether they don't know where he is. They're just hollering out there, Blue, Blue, come on, boy. Come on, come on, come on. And you'll do that for a little while. And all of a sudden, here they come running out of the woods. You know? They're excited. They heard, but were way away. And you couldn't see for a period of time where they were or where he was going to show up. He could come out of the woods over here, come out of the woods over there, could come from over here. You just don't know where he's going to come from. Come from under a building. You just don't know what, especially hound dogs, you don't have a clue where they're going to be. All right? They're off on some trail somewhere. But you're, some, you're speaking because you believe they'll hear and they'll come. And when we call those things which be not as though they were, we're calling, we're summoning that which we cannot see for it to come. Now, just like in the Bible, the first day that Daniel set his face to fast, the angel heard and was sent. Okay? Sometimes they don't show up immediately. Sometimes you can go through the drive through and it takes 20 minutes like it did this morning at McDonald's. Are you kidding me? Go, we're short-handed today. They're in their hash I actually got out and went in the side. I saw the drive through window, and there wasn't nobody working the cash register at the at the uh, at the front. So I went back. I got back in the car, went and got in line because there wasn't nobody. It was working at the cash register. I'm thinking, you know, this is this is crazy. I'm gonna just heading back on over to Bojangles down the road somewhere. Anyway. When you call that which is not as though it is, and you summon it, then you count the thing done. Because Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You can't prove in any natural manner that what you believe, what you're believing for, you have. can't I, you know, uh, somebody asked me you know, how do you um, convince people that have, they're a different culture with a different mindset and different religion I don't no. it's not my job my job is to preach, to preach the gospel let the Holy Spirit deal with their heart Amen. and the Holy Spirit convince them not me Amen. if I convince them in their logical mind then they'll have a logical religion right. and Christianity is nothing but faith it is absolute faith. Amen. They that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. They, you know, that if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. We have no way of, in the natural of proving Jesus was raised from the dead. I know people write books about intelligent faith and about, you know, they want to have the shroud of Turin to prove that it was Jesus' burial call. It doesn't matter if it was or wasn't. 
It doesn't matter if the carbon date he put his face on there or not, which I don't believe it did. I just think it's a, it's, it's a, I almost believe it's a hoax. My faith is not based in a shroud. Hello. Amen. Are you here? You've gone home. Amen. My faith is based. He going out of the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Amen. It's, it's a simple thing. We preach it. We let the Holy Spirit convict the hearts of men and then they choose to receive it or not. Amen. It's not up to me to figure out how to get them to, believe, to figure it out in their head how it is so. Because the just shall live by faith. Christianity is the great profession or the great confession. We believe and, we, and it's a matter of faith. And God's dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. So, the faith, our faith is the evidence of the things we can't see. How do you know you have it? Because I believe I received it. Yeah. I counted it done. Yeah. In Jesus' name. I have, count, I have counted it done Therefore, I have received it, whether I see it or not yet. Now, I don't walk around still calling those things which be as though they are not. I just keep speaking which I, that which I do not, does not exist as though it did. Until it's fully manifest. Amen. I'm the healed of the Lord. Amen. My needs are met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. You, keep, you keep speaking what the word says and you count the thing done even if you can't see it done. Can you say A to the men? Amen. Diffic see, and, and the difficulty lies in when you become carnally minded and try to want to see it, with, you know, have some kind of physical proof or physical evidence, you know, that this is so. Amen. Now, I don't have much of my notes, but the Holy Spirit just brought it to my remembrance. So if you can help me find it. Um, when Thomas came to Jesus and said, my Lord and my God. Anybody can find that real quick? Do I have? John 20. John 20. Yep, let's see here. Twenty-four. But Thomas, chapter twenty, verse twenty-four of John. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Here we go. Except I see the nails in, in, in his hands, the print of the nails. And put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand to his side. I will not believe. Remember, Jesus was crucified with the nails in his hands. And um, probably more likely here, they consider this part of the, the, the part of the wrist, the hand uh, through here. Um, and um, thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. And they pierced his side to make sure he was dead. And after eight days again, the disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst of them and said, peace be unto you. And then said he to Thomas, reach forth hither thy finger, and behold my hands, reach hither thy hand, and thrust it in my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Okay? Um, so be not faithless, but believing. Okay? Um, or do be not unbelieving, but believing. And um, Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. You know, I've heard a lot of sermons preached on my Lord and my God. I'm not sure that's a good sermon. <laughs> anyway, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you've seen, thou hast believed. Blessed are they which have not seen and yet believed. You see, Thomas wasn't going to believe that Jesus was raised from the dead unless he was able to come up to him and touch him. Jesus rebuked him for that. Called it faithless. The only reason you're believing is because you see it. Amen. 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 
And the same thing's true about faith. When you're releasing and exercising your faith, you're going to have to believe, you're going to have to believe and count it done whether you can see it or not, whether you can touch it or not, whether the circumstances around you are speaking contrary to it or not. And they will. 24-7. They'll sing in your ear. They'll, they'll start singing songs. I'm, it's not coming. It's not happening. You're going to die in your defeat. No, I mean, the devil, will, what, man, he'll, he'll come up with all kinds of tunes for you. Are you here? I mean, uh, you'll be singing with the temptations. It was just my imagination. <laughs> Run away with me. Oh! Anyway. See, when you begin to speak faith, the devil will come and try to rob you of your faith. And you have to count the thing done. And you have to confess it and you believe it and you hold on to it and you hold fast to it. And you don't waver in the middle of the battle, glory to God. And it may seem like your faith isn't standing strong. But stand in the word of God. Do not let go of the word of God. Confess that which does not exist as though it did. And then what happens? It comes to pass. I said it comes to pass. You receive what you have need of. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. And so it is important that you count the thing done that you're believing God for no matter what. Especially when the enemy comes and begins to resist and to speak contrary and they begin to give you all the reasons on the planet, it's not going to happen. Right. One of the reasons we struggle with this the most in as people is in the arena of healing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because pain hurts. Y'all yes, hear? Amen. You can feel it. Sometimes feel it all day long, all the time. Right. And, and it began to begin, you know, money's not quite as bad as pain. I mean, your bank account may not have anything in it, but you know, you, you, know, you can go Borrow some money somewhere. A lot of times, don't go rob, don't go borrow from the bank without them letting you. <laughs> I just borrow this for a little while. I'll bring it back later. <laughs> yeah, that's a felony. You go to jail for that one. But I mean, you know, you could a lot of times with money, you can just figure out how to make some extra money. You can do some get some extra money, whatever. But when it comes to physical diseases or sicknesses, um, and you got pain in your body, you, you're gonna, you know, it's talking. It'll talk to you. Amen. How many know what I'm talking about? Pain will talk to you. Amen. It'll tell you. It'll tell you you're going to die and not live. It'll tell you you're not going to make it. Right. Hello. The circumstances of disease or injuries or so forth in your body can speak real loud. Right. But it is amazing when you get into faith how different it is. Now, I've been, I know I've been using my toe lately, but i got a story to tell. i got a testimony. One of the things that, that was interesting to me was once I got over there and got, and, and got into faith and got hold of that, that I had my healing, even with my toe, and, you take, and Jamie would take pictures of it every day to, 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 keep, to, to, to uh, track the progress of it healing up. And I got this big, funky gash in it, like, like here, I mean, and it's got these, it's got three places that it's swollen out, and like it's a hole all the way down to the bone, it was just, it was disgusting. Now here's the thing, the, the, while I'm going through it, I was not bothered looking at it, because I was the faith I believed, I could consider that, and my, it didn't, I didn't get weak in faith, it didn't bother me to look at it, I didn't get grossed out to look at it, I go back, you know, I mean, I could, I, she take a picture, I say, okay, all right. And I mean, it's, and if you saw the picture, some of you might get sick. If you tried to show my brother the other day, he said, I don't want to see it. <laughs> oh, man, sight of his own blood, he'll pass out. I mean, he's always been that way. I said, well, you know what, here it is now. You want to see it? No, I don't want to see it. <laughs> now, the whole time this is going on, daily pictures, because we would, we would, every day we would take it, we would unwrap it. We would uh, ir irrigate it with saline solution. We would put, you know, put the, uh, the uh, silver gel and the silver gauze on it and rewrap it and all that kind of stuff. And if I find where I got where, when I could take a shower, we had to put a bag over it and wrap saran wrap around my leg to keep water from going down in there. I couldn't get it wet. Right. 
Boy, that foot was, was needed to bath by the time it got to the end. I'm going to tell you the truth. I was glad to give it a bath, too. The whole time, I can look at this picture. Oh, yeah, okay. I can look at the pictures. Now if I pull them up and look at them, I almost get sick. I mean, I'm so disgusted by how it looked. I mean, I'm like, oh, oh. I almost get afraid. Oh, wow. <laughs> But see, in the middle of that, I had counted the thing that I was in faith. I could look at that, and I was not moved by what I saw. Amen. I had an answer. I counted it done. Amen. I'm keeping my toe. Amen. The whole thing. Amen. Amen. I counted it done. It was mine. I'm keeping my toe. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I could, I could look at that thing, and it didn't bother me. I think, oh my God, what am I going to do? Oh my God. And, uh, this thing's, oh, this is disgusting. Jesus, you got to hurry up and finish this thing. Huh? People say, how are you doing? It's getting better every day. Yeah. Every day is better than the day before. Yeah. Every day it looks better than it did the day before. Even if it didn't, sometimes, you know, sometimes it just didn't look that much different than the day before. I didn't care. It was getting better every day. Under Jewish law, it was a death sentence for her to go out in public and come in contact with people. Because yep. she was considered to have a communicable disease. What she was supposed to do when she saw people was to stop and cry out, unclean, unclean. So they could avoid her mm -hmm. and not come in contact with her. But she was going down the street going, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him. Then she gets to where Jesus is and what's there? A multitude thronging him. What's a multitude thronging you? Unless you've been to Disneyland on a busy, 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 busy day, you haven't been there. Or New York City in rush hour, get everybody getting off work walking down the street. The crowd moves you along and takes you where they want to go. She gets there. And she's getting ready to violate about 60 points of the law by coming in contact with all them people. Yeah. Coming in contact with one was a death sentence. Right. Touching all of other people, it's, you know, it's like, you know, and the Jews knew how to stone you. They were good at stoning. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I wonder if they had the Levitical, um, you know, school of how to stone <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the rock concert. That's right. Thank you, Jeff. Need that one. She comes into that crowd, and instead of crying out unclean, she's not going to speak what she is. She's saying, "If I touch him, I'll be whole." And she gets there, and we believe she crawled in because the crowd was so big that you know she touched his clothes, and Jesus immediately, knowing himself that virtue went out of him, stopped. And turned about and said, who touched my clothes? And the spiritual disciples that he had said, Master, thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me. Let me give you the modern day, a paraphrased version of that from the King Jimmy. Jesus, what are you doing asking who's touching you? Everybody's touching you. Did you not get enough sleep last night? This whole crowd's touching you. And, of course, Jesus just ignores them. Yeah. And he looks round about, and the woman, fearing and trembling, came down and fell before him and told him all the truth. See, she got her confession out there. She held fast to it. She acted on it. Went and got it done. Hallelujah. And did not let anything get in her way. No, sir. See, the circumstance of the thronging crowd was a big circumstance. It was a death sentence for her. It was. That was her death sentence. To come in contact with that crowd was a death sentence. But the moment she made contact with her, him, according to her confession, what she was speaking, what she was summoning, what she was saying, she knew in herself that she was healed, made whole of that plague. And Jesus said, woman, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now, the King James, the Bible says that Jesus immediately knowing virtue had gone out of him. Yeah, it did. Well, see, he was saying, well, Jesus is power healer. Her faith is why the power was released. 
And we know there's a bunch of people touching him that's not getting healed. How do you know? They were just touching him out of curiosity. He didn't stop talking to anybody except this woman. Thy faith made thee whole. See, we know this, the power of God can be present and not manner and not work. When they brought the man on the couch and went up on the roof toward a hole in the roof and let down in the midst of them, the Bible said this prior to that, it says there were many doctors and Pharisees and lawyers uh, come out of every town round about and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The only one that got healed was the guy who showed up later was let down through the roof. Um, he got healed. Nobody else got healed. Faith is what got the answer from God. We have to believe what God's word says in order to receive it. Not because we can touch it. Not because we can prove it with in any... You can't, it's, you can't prove that you've received your healing in Jesus' name. Hello? Now the symptoms will disappear. But maybe not right away. There's times it doesn't happen. Actually, most of the time, it, it, it doesn't always happen right away. A lot of times it's, it's over a period of time. I don't care if it happens right away or over a period of time as long as I get it. Yeah. Amen. But you have to count the thing done and not let go of that and remain steadfast on that position and that point in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. we got a couple more points today. we have to do that next week. They're a little bit shorter. And so we're going to wrap it up next week with this teaching. But, you know, count the thing. And number eight is count the thing. And when your faith seems weak and your victory lost, get back to the Bible, get back to the Word, and count that thing done according to the Word of God. And don't lose it. Don't let it go in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's all stand up. We want to thank all of y'all for joining us today on Facebook. We call you blessed and favored of the Lord. May you walk in the blessings of God. Remember, when you're believing God for something, count that done and hold fast your profession. Don't waver. Don't let it go. Continue to speak and call those things which do not exist as though they did. And you will see it manifest in your life in Jesus' name. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you again next time. Hallelujah.